Hi everyone. This is a walkthrough put together by Eric Kanza, the Technical Director of Open Context, to introduce OpenRefine, a free and open source data cleaning tool. OpenRefine is super important for our data publishing workflow with Open Context, and we're sure many of you will find it a great way to reduce the tedium in cleaning archaeological data. It's important to remember that there are several aspects of data quality that go well beyond data cleanliness. A tool like OpenRefine, while super useful, does not address all of these different issues. With OpenRefine, we're mainly going to focus on these concerns, which broadly speaking relate to data cleanliness. The other issues shouldn't be forgotten, but they are not something that can be easily fixed or improved using a software tool like OpenRefine. Now, just a bit of background about OpenRefine itself. OpenRefine is a free and open source software application that you install on your own computer. It uses Java to power a web server, and you interact with the application through a web browser like Safari, Chrome, or Firefox. But even though OpenRefine runs as a web server, it is running on your own computer, not on the internet. For that reason, it's okay to use with private or sensitive information, provided that you keep your own computer secure. Because it runs on your own device, it's not like Google Drive, Google Spreadsheets, or other cloud computing services. A quick note on terminology. We're going to talk a lot about facets. Facets are basically data attributes together with counts of their frequency. Faceting helps provide a quantitative overview of what a data set contains. Open Context uses facets to help guide users in searches by summarizing quantities of different descriptive attributes that you can use to filter data. In this screenshot, you can immediately see there's lots more pottery than coins in this particular set of data. Facets are also super important to open or find as ref reflected by its faceted gemstone logo. OpenRefine presents data and facets that numerically summarizes unique values in different columns of your data set. That's very helpful when reviewing and cleaning data. After you install and launch OpenRefine, you'll see a screen that looks something like this. In my case, it's alerting me that an upgrade is available. So I'm gonna open a data file describing archeological artifacts. This data file is in the CSV format, meaning comma separated values. CSV is a typical and non-proprietary format for sharing tabular data. OpenRefine can also read tabular data from Excel and many other formats. You'll see several options to guide OpenRefine and how to read a data file. On the top, there's a preview of what the data looks like, and on the bottom, there are different options for processing data as it gets read. I'm highlighting character encoding here, because it's important for archaeologists that work internationally. UTF-8 is an important and widely used standard for expressing different writing systems like Chinese or Greek or Arabic. It's also used for diacritic marks like accents that modify Latin letters. You may need to play with the character encoding settings to properly read a dataset that contains multilingual text. When you finally load a dataset into OpenRefine, it will look something like this. By default, it chooses the first row of your data as your column headers. At first glance, it's not that different from Excel or Google Sheets, but as you'll see, you can interact with the data in very different ways. When we publish data with Open Context, one thing that we always check is to make sure that identifiers that are supposed to uniquely name things are in fact unique. So in this slide, I'm clicking on the column form slash reg, which is supposed to mean registration number. And I'm opening the Customize Facets option and then selecting the Duplicates Facet option. And then I look at the results. Of the 5,186 rows in this data table, 789 rows have repeated values in the form slash reg column. That's unexpected for a column that's supposed to contain unique identifiers for artifacts. It's not shown here, but in further investigation, there are hundreds of blank rows in this column. But right away, we can see how OpenRefine is useful in identifying an important data quality concern with this data set. Okay, let's check on the consistency of values in a column. We'll look at a text facet of the certainty column. When we do that, OpenRefine gives a list of all the different values in the certainty column and a count of how many times they each occur. This is a great way to detect and fix typos and other data entry consistencies. In this case, I'm going to fix a capitalization problem. Editing here lets me immediately change all five occurrences of the word certain with a lowercase c to make them consistent with the uppercase c certains. 
and there are many other straightforward edits I can do also. Abbreviations, typos, and the like can all be fixed quickly and comprehensively. When I'm done, I'm left with a few values that I just don't understand. This may take some more investigation, such as asking the data creator what these values mean. Besides editing, you can use the facets to filter the data. Here I'm filtering for rows where the certainty column has the value of the letter S, and we don't know what S means. This is a good way to see if maybe other columns are also messed up. There are other ways you can do edits with OpenRefine. Let's look at a com common issue where numbers or date formats come out looking strange. Here we have highlighted columns with number values expressed in a scientific notation that's hard to understand. For the len underscore height, meaning length or width column, we use edit cells, common transforms, and two number option. That option immediately parses and transforms the scientific notation into reasonable numeric values. OpenRefine also has some more sophisticated fuzzy <coughs> clustering algorithms to help guide edits. I'll use the edit cells, cluster and edit option on the material column. When I do that, Refine has identified groupings of minor variations of text values that you may want to combine. There are minor differences in capitalization and spelling that can be made more consistent. Here we're using the checkbox option to OK edits to merge some of these variations into a consistent new value. It's important to review these. In this case, we can make a judgment call that hematite and hematite question mark are important to keep distinct and not merge. This is important to remember. Data cleaning is a very human process, full of judgment calls. You want to be very thoughtful about this. And voila, I just edited 1,838 values in the material column. Let's say we're done with cleaning this data set. You can go to the upper right-hand corner and choose among several data export options. You can export the clean data as Excel or CSV. That's handy when you want to use the clean data. But another important export option is the OpenRefine Project Archive to File option. When you export an archive of the OpenRefine project, you not only export the clean data, but you also export every editing step you made. Essentially, this is an infinite undo feature that you can save, so you can retrace exactly how you moved from the original data set to your final clean version. You can share and discuss this editing path with collaborators if you need to. There's tons more you can do with OpenRefine. That's because OpenRefine has a powerful set of functions that you can use to script edits of data. Here's where things get more involved and where the learning curve is steeper. But if you can tolerate a little bit of programming, then you can unlock a lot more power out of OpenRefine. Fortunately, there are many helpful demos and how-to instructions that are available to help you figure things out. Just to recap, OpenRefine is very useful, especially if you need to routinely clean data prior to use. You could use Excel, Google Sheets, LibreOffice, or other approaches to edit data, but OpenRefine lets you get it done more quickly and more reliably. Moreover, it documents every change you make, so you can have some confidence that if you mess up somewhere, you can roll your edits back and try again. Thanks for your attention, and hopefully you'll have fun experimenting with OpenRefine to clean messy data.